Hey, welcome back to another live stream here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to dive into masking. Now, I have a whole lot to cover, so we're just going to jump into the computer and get started. But if you would like to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw 2024, consider using the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you a little bit of money at checkout. And let's go ahead and jump into the computer. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and you know I want to show very simply what a mask does. So what we're going to do is just come over here to effects, and I am going to throw something completely crazy on here, like uh, you know what? we'll go with a LUT. All right, now you can see that this is changing everything in the image, and that looks actually pretty good. But what if I only wanted this on half of the image? Well, what I could do is I can click on this little icon here and then I'm just going to use a masking bug and we're going to go with that and I'm just going to click right here and let me make this very obvious that it is transitioning. So what you can see as I rotate this half of the image has that particular effect and the other half does not better put anything that's in your mask that is white is going to show whatever effect you apply and anything in your mask that is black is going to hide whatever effect you just applied so that's some basics 101 of masking this works the same in pretty much every program Black conceals and white reveals is the common, uh, I guess, phrase. So we'll leave it at that. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of this LUT because we don't need that. Now, first things first, there are some differences with On One Photo Raw 2024 versus using one of the older models of On One. And that is this little bar that hides and shows. Uh, let me go ahead and bring back. I'll just bring back the, anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, and hit the letter B to get my brush tool. And you can see when I bring my mouse up to the top of the window, it actually shows this little toolbar. And when I pull it away and leave it away for a little while, that toolbar goes away. Many people do not like this. Let me show you how you can make it stay there permanently. What you're going to do is come up to view. And then you're going to click on this auto hide tool option bar. If it has a check mark, that means that it's going to hide every time that you move your mouse away from the top of the screen. But what we want to do is remove that check mark. So I'm going to click on it. And now you can see that no matter how far away I move from the top of the screen, my mouse or I'm sorry, my toolbar stays in the same place. Now, we'll go over the toolbar really quickly. I'm not going to go like crazy deep, super deep dive into this because I think that part of this is exploratory learning when it comes to masking. I just want to show you how to get mask added to your image because I think that's where some of the value of editing a photo really does come in. So over on the far left, you have your mask brush, and then you have what they call the masking bug inside of On One Photo Raw. Well, if you hit this little drop down arrow, you get a few more options. And we are gonna cover uh, a few of these options in this stream. So I'm not gonna go over it too much, but just know this is where your options are. And if you wanna look at the keyboard shortcuts here and just jot those down, then you can do that makes it a little bit easier for you to get access to those particular items. All right. So then we'll come over to this little square and this could be different. Uh, I guess previews. Yeah, we'll call it a preview. You can have different previews in there based off of the shape, but most of us are just going to have this round, uh, transparent little, uh, circle in there. And this is where all of your properties really exist. It may be uh, shrunken down like this when you first click on it, but if you click on each of these items, this is where you can get to those brush shapes, which is actually extremely handy if you are into doing some uh, more creative things, but we're not gonna cover that on today's uh, lesson. But 
this is also where you can get access to the feather opacity flow and then angle uh, angle really only applies if you're using a brush that actually has something where you could tell that there's an angle if you're using a circle guess what it's all the same doesn't matter what angle you decide to brush with that circle at it's going to be the same size so i'm not going to cover that but we will talk about flow uh, opacity feather and then resizing your brush because i think that those are all important for understanding masking um you can also activate oh, lost the menu you can also activate the perfect brush from here but again we're not going to go too deep into this right now i just want to kind of give the overview but the three main things that you'll be using whenever you use the masking brush are going to be the size the feather and the opacity now all of these have keyboard shortcuts if you hover over them um, the bracket keys are the primary key so the bracket keys are the two little keys that sit above and to the left of your return or your enter key on your keyboard all right or you could just come up here click the little drop down pull the slider left or right and it's going to work all right or you could use the bracket keys then with feather it's going to be shift and bracket in either direction so if you want to remove some feather you'll hold shift and then hit left bracket and if you want to make the brush more feathered then you'll hold shift and go to the right bracket and all feathering is doing is it's saying from the area that you paint that is going to be the most i'm sorry from the area that you paint that that will represent a hundred percent of whatever option that you are uh, painting and as you feather that away it's going to be less aggressive of that effect and you'll see that in real time here but just know that a hundred percent feather means that the edges of whatever you paint are going to be really soft and blend in pretty well and if you have zero percent feather that means the edges are going to be harsh and it's going to be very noticeable that you did something you may want that you may not want that just know that it's there then we have opacity and this is just how transparent is the thing that you're painting as you paint it onto your canvas all right again that'll come in handy when we get to there and here's where one of the biggest changes or i won't say biggest change because that makes it uh sound like there's something crazy that changed here's where one of the changes came in with photo raw 2024 uh, paint and erase are the options that we have if you are on paint you're going to have a plus icon on the center of your crosshair or your brush if you are on erase you are going to have a minus or a subtract symbol in the center of your brush all this means is if i you know we got the lens blur on so if i want to remove the lens blur from this individual and let me just go ahead and show you what happens when you go with a zero percent feather all right so if i want to remove the blur from this individual i can do that and that actually came out pretty good and if i crank up on the amount you can see uh what ended up happening here right i'm just removing because i'm on a race i'm erasing this effect from the image i'm not erasing the image itself i'm not deleting pixels or destroying anything i am just simply erasing this effect now we won't go into it today but everything that i'm masking is going to be an effect that does not actually uh, remove pixels there are maskings and i guess by default masking itself is non-destructive this means you can always repaint this in so if i wanted to i can hit shift and x which just changes me from erase to paint in now and i could just go ahead and paint over this and now i've reapplied that effect and if i don't want that air there anymore then i could just paint over this and i just made a larger brush and you could see how that all works all right so that's masking in a nutshell now let's get a little bit more advanced so we'll go ahead and paint this all back in and we have a few options here all right uh, we can use this little 
icon on the far right of our screen. And this is the perfect brush. All right. And what the perfect brush does is from the center of your mouse, it's going to sample and then it's going to find or the center of your brush, I should say, not the center of your mouse, center of your brush. So where the little minus sign is, it's going to sample there. And as I drag this around, it's finding similar colors. You can see how it's finding all the yellows and it's just removing those for me because that's what I have selected, which is a race. Now, this comes in handy when you come to an edge and you want to uh, kind of get a very crisp edge. You can see how well it's uh, kind of cutting the subject out, but fading everything else and, you know, I'm, or leaving the effect on everything else. Now, obviously, it's not perfect because my brush is way larger than it ought to be. Uh, whenever you work with the perfect eraser, I'm sorry, perfect brush, I do recommend a smaller brush uh, because this helps with defining those edges a little bit better. And you'll learn this over time, but you can see as I paint over this individual, I'm bringing back his shirt and <clears throat> creating a little bit of a more defined mask. All right. Now, what I do recommend is if you choose to use the perfect brush, that you only do it for the edges and then you just use a regular brush to paint in everything else. I wouldn't use this to paint in the center because, again, it's sampling information. And then I would just turn off the perfect brush, paint in the center like so. And, you know, you could have your mask. So that is the first advanced technique of masking is to use the perfect brush. And this is really uh, a way of getting a very precise mask. If I hit the letter O on the keyboard, look at how precise that mask is around my subject here. It's not perfect, right? I was just kind of loosely painting and, you know, it's not perfect. However, I wouldn't have been able to get that with using just regular brush settings. All right. Remember, white is showing the effect. Black is removing the effect. What I'm noticing is I have some gaps here, so I just need to paint that in. So that way the effect isn't there. All right. Hit the letter O to go back to the actual image. And then I'll hit command and zero to fit this back into the middle of my screen. And if there's anything that I cover where you're like, Chris, I have questions, just drop it in the comment section, regardless of if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the replay. All right. So now that we understand where the tools are and some of the basics about masking, let's go ahead and jump into uh, a little bit more, I guess, detail about masking. All right. So. One of the easiest ways to render a mask, I'm just going to make this black and white. One of the easiest ways to render a mask is to use something called Super Select AI. All right. That's this little wand over here that says Super. And when you use Super Select AI, what it does is it tries to find regions of the photo that actually need some sort of uh, modification. All right. So if I click here, it's going to highlight it all in blue. And then if I hover over here, it's going to highlight that in blue. And then I can try and grab some of that. It's not always perfect. All right. I just want to make that clear. It's not perfect. But what it can help you do is get a good selection of your image fairly quickly without having to use a brush, all right? And if you select something that you didn't actually mean to select, then all you have to do is click on it again, and it'll either paint it in blue or it'll remove it. But I wanna paint all of this stuff right here in blue. And what Super Select AI really allows you to do is you can come up to adjustments after you've selected everything that you want and you can actually throw in some different adjustments. So 
let's say I want to go to a tone enhancer and I want to contrast. So what it's going to do is throw a contrast over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And where did my tone enhancer go? Let's try that again. I'm just going to click on a whole bunch of this stuff to get as much of it as I can. I don't know why it didn't go the last time. And you don't have to be overly uh, concerned with the precision of this because I'll show you how to modify a mask here in a little bit. But we'll go ahead and right click and, you know, we'll just go with adjustment and I'm going to select. Uh, we want to contrast it. Yeah, we'll expose it. Why not? All right. So what that does is it adds a local adjustment with the mask. If I hit the letter O adds a local adjustment with the mask that was just created with Super Select AI. Then what I can do is I can come over here and let's say I want it, all of that to be brighter in the image and we'll even contrast it because I think that that would look cool. Pull down on some of the blacks, increase the white just a touch and let's see what the middle tones do. All right. So we'll do something like that. All right. Maybe even throw in some structure. Doesn't matter. I'm not really trying to edit. I'm just trying to show you. Uh, the power of what you can do with a mask while you are editing. So if I hit the letter O, I can see that I need to clean up my mask, but this is kind of hard to work in. And so one of the ways that I do like to work with my mask is using the red overlay. And the way that you can change that is come down to the very bottom here, click the little drop down chevron, and click red overlay and this shows me anything that has uh, red means that it's not going to be a part of my mask which means it's not going to take the effect that I have applied however if I just go ahead and paint over this using the paint function I can just go ahead and paint over all of this and now I am adding this to my mask and it's easy for me to see what I'm working on. And I think that it's important to use both of the masks overlays, the red overlay, as well as the black and white or the grayscale overlay. They have different features and, and functions. It's a lot easier to see the transparency and the gradation of a mask with the gray overlay where it's a lot easier to see what it is that you're painting on with the red overlay. So hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, just you know, drop it in the comment section, ask your question, and I'm just going to erase all of this from here. And so now if I go back to my gray mask, grayscale, you can see, and I have that 100% feather by the way, so you can see what happens with the feather. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see what happens when you use a brush that has a hundred percent feather, how it just kind of gradually fades that in. And this is really, really helpful when you're trying to make believable masking edits. All right. So knowing how to change the feather of a brush, is definitely going to help you out, but I don't need that in this area. So I'm going to paint it away completely. And if you're wondering like, Hey, how are you moving around without going to the zoom tool, holding down the space bar key when you're zoomed in allows you to get temporarily like this little hand, it'll grab the, uh, the photo and then you just click and drag and it works out uh, really well. So it helps me navigate from time to time when I'm working on complex edits, but that's something you should be aware of. And if I come up here, I can see that I need to paint in, not erase these little areas up here because I see this transparency. And so this is the reason why 
you want to jump between both of those masks or mask overlays. The red one allows you to see what you're painting while you're painting. And then the grayscale one allows you to clean up the mask and get a little bit more precise and accurate. So I'll hit the letter O. We're back on a black and white image. And let me go ahead and turn this effect off and on. And you can see how that's just changing the, uh, the contrast of the image overall. Now, if I turn off this black and white effect, I don't know if it's any more or less. Uh, it's brighter in that area, which, you know, this could be an effect that you want to go for using this little bush area as a foreground interest um, or a foreground leading line that takes you to the subject, which should be brighter. And it makes this a little bit darker. That could be a practical edit. It could not. I don't know. That's not really the point of today's uh, lesson. It's really just to teach you how to use each of these tools so you can do this on your own photos. Now, let's talk about the other uh, <laughs> major change that I kind of glossed over because it's time to start doing some stuff in there that I think is value added for the overall image. All right. And that is this floating properties box. Let me go ahead and close that and show you how to open it. Because if you're new to on one or definitely if you're new to 2024, you are probably either hating or loving this new uh, user interface. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. it if you want to use the software, this is the interface that we got. So I want to show you how to uh, get as much out of the interface as we can uh, with what we got. So if I click this little icon, the show hide mask options, which is like my thumbnail preview, it brings this little box up and it remembers where I had it last. So if I move it over here and I close it out and then I open it back up, well, it's going to open up over here. They call this sticky. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. Just know that if you want to open up the properties box, you got to click right there. It's going to open up the properties box and you'll be good to go. All right. Now, what is worthwhile mentioning here is notice I'm on the masking uh, option set, if you will. And underneath, I have something called mask AI. What this allows me to do is I can select different aspects of the photo based off of what mask AI tells me is response or in the photo or thinks is in the photo, I should say. So I have background. I can hover over that. I got foreground. I could hover over that and you can see the red overlay updating on the screen. So it is saying that this individual, which was my subject of this photo, is my foreground. And then everything else is the background. So it's doing a pretty decent job of finding the foreground and background, uh, at least in this particular image. It does not always work that well. But in this image, it's doing pretty good. Then it starts to give you individual things that the artificial intelligence is picking up on. And this is one of the big things about using something like this. You don't have to use a brush all the time. So I can very quickly build up a mask around this individual. I don't know what it's identifying as sky. I don't see that red overlay, but it's identifying food there. I don't need the people. And then it's identifying transport in the back. And I'm leaving the flora left out. So if I just go ahead and hit apply, what it's going to do is change my mask to whatever I just selected. All right. Now, that could be helpful. That could be not so helpful. I'll leave that up to you, depending on how you like to work. All right. Let's go ahead and reset the mask. So down here at the bottom of the properties uh, window, we have a few icons. And I would love for some words to be added underneath these. Like, I feel like there's plenty of space here to kind of spread these out and add words. So that way you know what you're clicking, but the first one is going to be invert mask. So if I were to come over here and select a bunch of stuff, so I'll hit the letter O so you can see this in action right now, 
everything that's in white is being impacted. But if I wanted to do the opposite of that, I can hit invert. And now I'm impacting everything that was black. Uh, so I can flip the mask back and forth. This is really, really handy when it comes to editing everything else uh, in your images. Then you have luminosity masking, which I'm not going to cover it uh, right now. I will show you that you can create something based off of the brightness of your image. In order to kind of tweak the luminosity mask, you have to use this window slider. Right now, this is masking the entire image. But if I only want to focus on the brightest parts of my image, I need to move this left uh, dot more over to the right. And what it does is it adds it the mask only to the brightest pixels in the image. All right. Uh, luminosity masking is another one of those advanced masking techniques. Super, super useful, especially in landscape photos, but you can find use for it in every photo. Um, and I'm not going to go into great detail on this. Just know that if you want to use luminosity masking, the way to modify this, at least to select the range for the light is to use this little dot here. The challenge with this, you don't know what this represents. Like if there was a numbering system on here somewhere, I think that that would be helpful. So that way I would know, OK, this is, you know, if we say that this is zero and this is, you know, I don't know, just some numbers, right? Uh, this could be zero over here. This could be 100. And as I move this in to 40 and then I move this down to 70, then at least I have some numbers that I can kind of think of in my mind and say, OK, what does that really represent? Uh, if you're familiar with the zone system that Anzo Adams used and what DxO uses in their uh, software, then this is one of those things that on one could definitely step up the game, but I won't get into that. Nonetheless, this is how you can modify the um, luminosity mask. Then you have the reset mask. This is one of my favorite buttons because sometimes I mess up the mask and I need to start over from the beginning. So I like to hit the reset button. Uh, then you have a copy and a paste for a mask. What this allows you to do, I'll just hit the luminosity button here and I will pull this up and I'm going to feather this mask, which just makes those edges less defined. Very, very useful for uh, blending things in an image. And then I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to add another adjustment. This time you can see that the mask doesn't have anything on it. It's just a blank mask. But since I copied that last mask, what I can do is hit paste. And now you can see I have that mask again. This is extremely helpful if you need to do something where you already created the mask and you spent time, especially if you're using like the perfect brush or something like that. And you're like, man, I don't want to redo that. Well, just copy a mask. And if you need the opposite of what that mask is doing, then you can just hit the invert button and look. All of that works out just the same. All right. And then the last one is the show hide mask button. I use the keyboard shortcut O personally because one, it's right in front of my left hand, uh, which I use to move over the keyboard. Um, and it's just an easier shortcut for me to remember. And I can even use it when the layer property uh, or I'm sorry, the masking property window is shut. So learning the keyboard shortcuts is helpful, especially like the shift X, the O, um, things where you will need to use them. Uh, it, it's up to you, but I definitely recommend learning some of those keyboard shortcuts. All right. So that is in a nutshell, the properties. All right. I didn't go over these sliders yet because that's going to be a part of how we actually mask something. So let's go ahead and dive into masking something else. All right. Let's go ahead and create more vibrancy in this area, in the flora. 
Now, the way that I like to mask is manually. That's just me personally. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on exposure and I'm going to pull up on my vibrancy slider over here and I'm just going to paint this over. Now, depending on how strong or how well this comes through on YouTube, uh, I do apologize if it's not very prominent, but uh, what I can do is just pull up on the exposure as well. So if I turn this off and on this effect, you can see that I'm adding vibrancy to this image. Now I use again, a 100% feather uh, on the brush, but I also have access to feathering the entire mask. And this is more of uh, what I like to call the inlay feather, which means, let me show you how that works. Let me hit O and I'm going to reset the mask. And then we're going to get rid of all of our feather on the brush. So I have a harsh brush here and I'm just going to paint this over and you can actually see that in the image, right? Uh, where those harsh lines are. And that's the reason why you want to use a hundred percent feather or at least uh, some feather, right? And in, in most cases, not always, but in most cases, if I hit the letter O and I pull up on this feather, you'll see that what this feather is doing, instead of pushing the edge out, it's actually separating both sides of it. So uh, it's bringing it more in to the line or the painted area, and it's also taking it out of the painted area. So there's like this gradation between where the effect is not and all the way down to where the effect is. And you could see that uh, fairly clearly in this representation of the painting. What that looks like in practical use is this. So we literally went from something that was harsh like that to something that is a little bit more uh, blended in with the image. You could barely tell. Uh, I can see that this area right in here is pretty bright, but you know that's like an extreme case, something for you to be aware of whenever you go to painting your images. Uh, or using the mask. And that's the feather. Now, let's go ahead and come back to the grayscale. Again, the grayscale mask, it gives you more refined uh, idea, or it gives you a more refined idea of what your mask is actually doing. One of the things that I really enjoy using, and it can be a little overwhelming at first, is this level option. Give me one second is this levels option, all right? So if I pull the level to the right, you can see it's not really doing anything to that mask and you can't see any of this. The reason for that, let's go back to our actual photo here. If I pull, and I think this is all in the highlights anyway, uh, what this is allowing me to do, if I pull this feather up, you know what, this is a bad example for how this will work because uh, what what this level slider does is it allows you to blend from the darkest point to the middle gray. It says blend this fast. If something is really dark, uh, from dark to middle gray, blend really fast or blend really, really slow. And then from middle gray, to the brightest point that this mask is covering, blend really, really fast or blend really, really slow. All right. So this really comes in handy when you are masking on images that are extremely bright or extremely dark. And in fact, let's see, let's turn on the black and white again. And we'll come back to this local adjustment. And since that's a vibrancy adjustment, we'll just make it an exposure adjustment. And let's see if this nah, doesn't want to cooperate because I'm streaming. It makes like makes it not. Uh, yeah. 
Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know why that's not working. Because it should be working. Okay, so we want to watch the edge there. And, huh, interesting. All right, well, I'm not going to waste time on that. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm doing something wrong and I'm just not even catching it. Uh, but feather is the thing that you're going to use the most frequently. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, we'll leave it that feather is what you'll use the most frequent. Now let's come back over to effects. We'll get rid of this black and white and we'll come over to local and let's just reset all of our local adjustments. And we're going to do something else with this edit. So again, if you got questions, then please, uh, let me know down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. I uh, don't know what happened with that levels thing. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at quick select. All right. I'm just looking at my notes, making sure that I don't miss something. So one of the other ways of selecting things inside of an image or uh, to mask is using the quick select tool. So if I hit the letter B to get my masking brush, I guess I should probably give myself an adjustment. Uh, and now I get the masking brush. All right. If I click this little drop down Chevron and I come down to you have quick mask AI brush. This is the super select AI tool that allows you to kind of hover over everything and select it like I showed earlier. And then you have the quick mask brush. Now this is what they call the OG brush or the original brush that we used before the super select AI technology was included in photo raw 2023. So if you are familiar with it, then you know what I'm doing, but if you're not, it's okay because I think that there's some actual benefit to using this particular tool and I won't go in all the detail. I actually have a video on how to use the quick selection brush on my channel. So you can go check my video library for that. Uh, I didn't think forward enough to give you the link in the description. So I do apologize for that. However, you got two options here. You got keep and you got erase. And this is just as simple as that. Everything that you want to keep in your mask or everything that you want to keep with the effect, then you'll paint with keep. Everything that you want to erase, then you'll paint erase. So I want everything around this individual to be dark. So that means I don't want him to be dark. I'm going to erase him from my mask. And this mask doesn't have to be precise, all right? The closer you get to edges, I find that it works a little bit better, but you don't have to paint the entire subject or thing that you're trying to mask. Then I'm going to go with keep. And all I'm going to do with keep is with a fairly decent sized brush, I'm going to paint all the way around this individual, just like so. And I'll even add in that bottom piece like that. Now I've given on one enough information to go and make an adjustment. For some reason, we got to click this little drop down arrow. Uh, <laughs> it's building the mask. So this is a little bit different than what we're used to uh, in the previous versions. But this little drop down arrow in between the reset and the check mark, that's what you click to create the mask. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, in previous versions, it didn't take this long. But it is what it is. We got 2024, and this could be my fault. I don't know. I don't think it is. And hopefully, it builds the mask here pretty soon. Uh, because what it's going to do is everywhere that I paint it red, 
it's going to go ahead and uh, give me a red overlay and everywhere where I paint it green, it's going to give me a green overlay and it kind of blends the two together. So it's really, really helpful and also really, really lengthy for some reason. Not sure what's going on here because this, this normally doesn't take nearly as long as it's taking right this second. And you can't really do anything else in the software uh, while this is going. So hopefully yours doesn't give you an issue like this. Hmm. Okay, well, let's do this. I am going to restart on one uh, because... I'm not sure what the deal is with that. It normally doesn't take that long. And for the sake of not sitting around watching me do nothing, I'm just going to restart on one. So that way we can continue on with the, uh, with the stream. Hey, Jose, welcome to the stream. Welcome, my friend. Good to have you here. So, all right. And one of the beautiful things about on one is it restarts really quick. So in that short period of time from me identifying that it was I was going to cancel it and reopen it, I'm right back into the photo. Uh, I closed out on one completely and then I opened it back up. So this version really does move a lot faster and, uh, you know, it's got its hiccups here and there like I just experienced um, and I don't want that cancel sky I did not mean to click on that no now it's going to try and process the sky because I clicked on the sky replacement AI feature and I didn't actually want to replace the sky because there's no sky in this photo and yeah Man, that is super annoying when that happens. Jose says, yes, it is lengthy. And already that's a deal breaker for me. Uh, what exactly is lengthy? Are you saying the AI mask tool or or what, what exactly were you saying was lengthy? All right. So I'm not going to go over the quick mask AI tool or the OG AI mask tool. Apparently my computer doesn't like that right now. Um, so we'll skip over that, but I will show you a pretty cool tool that was added in 2023.5 and it's called the encircling tool, but I personally like to call it the subject select tool because that's essentially what it is. Uh, but you know, on one had to call it something different, I guess, whatever, uh, to get to that, you're actually going to use a different menu. All right. And you'll use the, you'll hit brush and then you'll click the little drop down and you'll come to the refine brush. That's the letter in on the keyboard. And you can tell that it's in a different menu. Uh, once upon a time, they used to be separated. They consolidated everything, which I'm thankful for. And, Anything that's below this really, really finely, probably impossible to see. But if you're looking on your version of on one, you'll see this little gray line in between line mask and refine brush. So everything up here are masking tools and everything down here are refinement tools to your mask. Now, if you grab the refinement brush and you make it a relatively simple uh, or small size to your subject, right? Um, if you paint around your subject, like over the edges of your subject, and I'm doing this with a mouse, I hear that if you have a Wacom tablet, which I do, but I'm terrible with it, uh, this could be a little bit easier. But using just a mouse, and I'll come this way. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
notice that I didn't paint in the center of the mask or the center of this little uh, tool. If I let that go, on one's going to think for a little bit, and then it's going to essentially mask him out, all right, or mask out everything. If I hit the letter O, you can see that it's applying the effect to my subject. And let me zoom in because it does a really good job at selecting the subject. Like when I first seen this tool, I got a little excited and I was like, man, this is a really cool tool. And there's so many applications for it uh, because the super select AI just doesn't always get it. So you got to be able to tell on one what you want to mask. And the encircling tool really does help. Now, obviously, I didn't necessarily want him to get the uh, the negative exposure adjustment. So I can do the invert and then I can mask or I'm sorry, feather this a little bit. And that's going to soften those edges. So now. If you look, we'll come back out here and I'll turn this adjustment off and on and you can see how he just gets a little bit brighter and starts to pop off the background. So, you know, that's a practical edit. It's a practical option. And I really enjoy using it this way. And Jose says this process takes a long time, which um, it does. Masking can be quick or it can be uh, refined. And that's the, you know, that's what you have to decide on. All right. Some things don't need as much work and you can get away with a little bit of a sloppy mask. And then there's things where you're trying to like be surgical about it and you got to get more into uh, masking and refining that particular mask. So got the encircling tool. Now, the last tool that I wanted, or I guess the second to last tool, because we're going to go over two more tools. Uh, but these ones are going to be fairly quick. So let me reset this mask. And the la or the second to last tool is going to be the color range tool. All right. Now, there's a few ways of using the color range tool. I personally use it over here in the properties menu. So if I click this, turn on this little uh, radial dial and I can do one of two things. I can use this little eyedropper and go and sample an area. So I want all of the greens to be my sample point. And you can see what this does in the overall mask. And I wonder if my levels will work on this one. Yeah, so my levels work on this one. Uh, maybe that was the, the issue. I was painting with a brush the last time, and these require uh, some form of either luminosity or a color. And that's why it didn't work the last time. So we'll, we'll be able to get into that. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. I did say I'm probably missing something here. And that's what I was missing. All right. So what do you do with the range mask tool? I'm sorry, the color range tool. Well, if I select a color, and I get this color range slider down here, the further to the left it is, the more exact or precise it's going to be to the color that I sampled. The more to the right, it's just picking up you know, more colors in the image. It doesn't have to be as precise to that color. All right. Uh, this is a very, very powerful way of fine tuning and honing in on the colors that you want to uh, manipulate or add an effect to whatever it may be. Uh, if there is a prominent color or something where it's like the color makes sense. Now, one thing that I recommend with all of the mass luminosity mass color range mass, and even the brush is you throw a little bit of feather on here. The reason if I hit the letter O look at how, uh, you know, with a negative exposure, um, adjustment, Look at how aggressive that is. But if I were to pull up on the feather, it kind of fades it out. So now it looks more natural to the overall image. If I hit the letter O, you can kind of see what that's doing. And that's good because you don't want people to really see 
that you masked something in your image. Uh, not that you have to work that way, but most people don't want people to see that. So take a look at what Jose is saying. Um, get quicker results with Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, and then, in fact, with the newer version of Photoshop, it hasn't failed me yet and it keeps getting better. Sorry if I'm too frank. No, nope, that's perfectly fine. Uh, everyone has their own way of working with photos. And if you prefer Photoshop, which I like Photoshop too, um, I just personally like working in on one because everything is pretty streamlined for me. Uh, and yeah, Photoshop has some really good tools. I'm not going to knock it. All right. Um, with that being said, using the tools that are here inside of on one, we'll go ahead and pull up on this exposure and you can see, you know, how that's really helping me with uh, identifying more in this image. Now, the other way that you can choose a color is you can just click this little box here. And let's say you knew what color you wanted to work with, or uh, maybe you kind of wanted to sample around. Well, you can just drag this around and look at how I'm changing the effect over the entire image as I sample different colors. And this is extremely helpful when you have a photo where there's a myriad of colors and you're like, I have no idea what I want to do. Well, maybe select a uh, color and modify it like so. All right, now I did mention that there was another way of using the color range tool, excuse me. And the way that you can use the color range tool or the second way, which I don't use as often is if I come over here and I select the masking, but uh, gradient mask, it's called gradient mask. We used to call it the masking bug. Yeah. Anyhow, gradient mask. Uh, we'll go ahead and I like to use this with a radial filter, but You'll notice in on one, if you've come from other software, we have something called vignette and it doesn't matter if you choose vignette, uh, strong or just a regular vignette. When you click that, you get the shape and the center or the edges. I always get confused with these. So I usually just click on center, click on it. And what this is doing is it is protecting the center and putting the effect all over uh, the image away from the center. All right. That's what this particular thing is doing. Now, if I come up here and I click on color range, it's now sampling instead of this color over here, it's sampling from the center of my radio filter. So, uh, where my mouse is right here in the middle of the screen, so to speak, that's where it's sampling. And if I pull this over here and update it, you'll see the color in my swatch updates. And if I hit the letter O, you can see that I can go all around this image and it updates. Once you set it down, it doesn't update in real time. Uh, you know, if your computer updates in real time, then that's great, but mine doesn't, it updates after I set it down and there's nothing wrong with this. I just personally don't use it. If you find value in using this particular method of masking, then go for it. I personally like to sample the color over here and let it go across the entire image. All right. Um, and then brush it out wherever I don't want it. Things like that. I like to manually brush things, but uh, if for whatever reason you find value in using this particular tool, then uh, that is the second way. And this also works if you come over to, we'll go linear bottom, and I can still sample based off of what is in the center, the, the larger circle, right? There's two circles here. So I have the little circle, which allows me to rotate the direction of the mask and then I have the larger circle that's actually sampling the area. Now, again, 
using the color range tool here, I can pull down to sample more closely to the color that I am actually uh, sampling here. And you can see just how refined and finite that can get. And then I can also pull up. And, you know, I, I feel like there's some absolute value in being able to mask in this way. I just personally have not done it. So that's the reason why I'm saying uh, you can go for it. And I think that you'll find some value in doing this. But I personally have not uh, found the value in it. But what I will say is you should feather at least a little bit to blend things in. So it looks more natural as you make whatever adjustments you're making. So I can, you know, do all kinds of stuff here. Um, now, what I did mention earlier, we'll talk about levels. So let me pull down the feather. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of. We'll just pull it down like so. OK, that should be a good selection. We'll see. Um, OK, Jose, thanks for hanging out um, and welcome to the channel. Thank you for the subscribe uh, and the like, man, you are amazing and I hope to see you around. Uh, and yeah, I, I use Photoshop, too, so I fully understand the the draw to Adobe products and I'm not knocking them. I just personally like to work in one program and on one allows for that. And I guess I also use plugins, so not always in one program, but uh, on one allows me to do 95 percent of what I want to do for my personal workflow and photography. So uh, but great to meet you, Jose. And uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I'll be here. So I love to see you around. All right. So earlier I talked about levels and window. Now, window still works the same. The closer you get to the brightest areas, that's what's going to impact the overall uh, mask here. The closer you bring this to the darker areas and then you can do some combinations in between. Again, this is where that gray scale masking really or mask overlay really comes in handy. You could double click the words to reset forgot to mention that earlier so if you find yourself with things like this and you're like oh, I don't want to just pull those both back just double click the words it's going to reset it give you the full spectrum of the luminosity that you have from the darkest shadow to the brightest uh, highlight so to speak all right but with levels this works a little bit differently this is going to say how fast do you want those transitions between the darkest areas to the middle gray? How fast do you want that transition to happen? If I pull this middle slider over to the left, it's going to happen from the darkest to the middle gray. It's happening really, really fast. And then I can even pull down on my highlights and you start to get these more harsh uh, transitions. And this could be helpful. This could be desirable if I crunch everything together, right? Let me just reset that real quick. And I could also make things really, really uh, not dark, but essentially saying, okay, I don't want this in the darkest areas or the, in, in this case, I think for the color range, it's probably the areas that don't have as much of this color, I don't want you to include that. I want you to only focus on the areas that have the color. So this is like a tolerance slider almost. Kind of similar to what's happening with this one. Just a more fine tuned version of it. I hope that makes sense. I promise you the more you practice with this, uh, the more it will make sense for your photography. Uh, don't be intimidated by it is what I would say. All right. Just use it. See how you can really manipulate things with it. But I always recommend throwing in a little bit of feather. All right. So that is the second to last tool. The last tool we're going to go through fairly quickly. Uh, but 
it is a very powerful tool. I use it quite often and it is the line mask tool. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Let me hit the letter O so I can get my, um, my photo back. And let's say you were working with something that was very symmetrical and you want it to keep the lines pretty precise and a brush just isn't going to cut it. Well, I'm going to click here, click here, click there. I'll come over here and then I'll complete my circle like so. Now I have a border or a mask outline, if you will, around my subject here. And if I click the plus icon, it's going to paint in whatever modification that I have here. Now, I do have some features of masking this in. If I hit the letter O, you can see what the mask is doing. I can pull up on the feather and you can see how that's feathering those edges. So that way it blends a little bit better. All right. Or I could take the feather all the way down and now it's like these really harsh edges. Both could be uh, very helpful. I personally would not do this on this image like that. I would probably throw in some feather and you could see how right here, if you look, let me just zoom in. So we're going to look at this bottom line over here to the right as well. So over the water bottles and then up this bar to the right next to the leaf. So I'm going to start to pull up on this feather and look at how that just kind of disappears into the image. And that's the benefit of feathering your mask. All right. So now when I make these updates, so I'll just go ahead and hit the little check mark. Now, when I make my modifications, it just blends a little bit better and it doesn't look like something that doesn't fit in the overall image. So that's the reason why I am a, uh, a huge fan of using this particular line mass tool. And we got Chaz from Pittsburgh in the house. Welcome 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 glad to see you uh here and you know hopefully uh helpful to learn something about masking here inside of on one photo raw so that's the line mask tool in a nutshell now this line mask tool can be used for so many creative things let me show you another method of using it and We'll just hit the letter B to get the brush. I'm going to click on the line mask tool. Uh, also, whatever tool you last used besides the regular brush, it will save in this area. So it makes it easier if you want to come back and find that later. So I am going to make some really wonky, off the top, crazy design here and this is where the line mask tool really does shine all right uh because like a mask like this is not impossible to make with a brush but really not fun to make so if i click the plus icon hit the letter o you can see i just made some really weird shape nothing organic about it right and then i could feather it and make it a little bit less offensive. But what's really cool about the line mask tool is I can shape around a person. So let me go ahead and uh, delete this one and zoom in here. And this is similar to the pen tool inside of Photoshop. So if I click here and then we'll click right about there. Now I have this little dot in the center. I can just pull that out and I can shape around my subject. Now, this does take some time, but again, a refined mask gives you precision and, you know, depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish with your masking, this could be the way to go. All right. And let's say I just want a shirt. All right. So I'll probably come somewhere to here, pull this up 
to about there. And I'm not making a perfect mask just because I don't want to uh, make this crazy long stream. So in this area, just forgive the, the sloppiness there. But you would normally come down into this little spot. But I'm not going to do that today. And I'll just push that down like so. Come down here. And we'll come right here. And I'm going to just cut through that water bottle again. Forgive the sloppiness of the mask for the sake of not spending too much time trying to make this overly perfect. And I actually was supposed to go under the shirt, but I didn't mask that too well. Oh, well, this is for conceptual purposes only. So now I'll reconnect this and I will click on the inside. So I apply whatever adjustment that I want to make to the mask to the center of that mask. And if I hit the letter O, you can see I have cut out a shirt. Doesn't really uh, help to see it that way. And so let's go red overlay. And so now you can see the shirt is cut out and I can start making modifications to the shirt. I'll probably feather this because I always recommend feathering. Why is this lagging so much? You don't need to feather it that much, right? But you want to feather it a little bit. And then we'll hit the little check mark. I'll hit the letter O to turn off my mask. And now maybe I want a shirt to be a little bit more vibrant. So boom, pulled up the vibrancy. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more warm. So boom, now it's more warm and it looks unnatural, but hopefully something worth showing. So you can see how to make very precise masking uh, options inside of photo raw 2024. Now, if you're on one of the earlier versions of photo raw, then you will still have access to the line mask tool. I think they included it in photo raw 2022. So 2022 and beyond you have access to the line mask tool. Uh, and yeah, in a nutshell, a very long nutshell, uh, very long stream, about an hour. Um, that is masking. There are so many different things that you can do with combining these particular tools to modify your images. And there's so many other features that I just don't have time, unfortunately, to go through every single aspect of what you can do with a mask. What I will say is try using the things that I showed on your images and wherever you run into issues, let me know. I will be more than happy to help answer those questions. You can send me an email at freewillphotos at gmail.com, or you can leave a comment down below. You can go over to my website and uh, use my contact form on the website. I'm responsive in all three of those locations. So please uh, don't feel like you have to suffer alone if you are struggling with on one. Uh, I would love to assist as best as I can. So with that, I will have to uh, end the stream here. I got to get to my my day job and, uh, you know, I'll be back. So hopefully you found value. If you did smash the like button, if you're new here, hit the subscribe. And if you want to save some money by picking up things on the on one website, then consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace. Mm -hmm.